Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World. My name is Daniel Rosell. Today I thought I would give you guys a quick look at the file structure I'm using on my NAS device from Synology to try to capture basically all the information that I want to put out to archive. So I did a video about my, uh, or a diagram I should say, about my optical media backup slash archive approach. And probably archive was actually, should have been a better heading here because there is a difference between backup and archive. And what the way I conceive of the data I'm putting out to archive is uh, retaining all the stuff I'm creating that I might want to use in the future. So if you take the YouTube videos or the podcast, you know, I might want to syndicate them elsewhere. I might want to screen the originals on my different channels and stuff like that. So basically, um, it's a broad, broad data pool that I'm generating on an ongoing basis. I wouldn't really describe myself as a content creator per se, although I guess I would actually. I'm a content creator and uh, I also do this for uh, for my job, by which I mean that I do videography work on behalf of my employer and podcast work. So it all kind of goes into the same pool because that's any data that I might need to go back to. And I do go back to my archive data I wouldn't say all the time, but somewhat frequently, especially now that it's catalogued. I might need an old clip from an old uh, shoot uh, that I did, a video shoot, a lot of it's video data, or I might need some old photos. Um, and it's just, it's easy to go back to the archive once everything is properly labeled. So the, the what I call the intermediate uh, storage is basically my kind of folder that I use to build up this archive as a month goes through. And I just wanted to kind of give you guys um, a tour in brief of the kind of system I'm using. Now, this is something I've developed again based on what I see as the data that I want to archive, uh, but you might be doing something different. So just starting at the top here, I've just emptied the folder. Um, so I do occasionally create, this is just a folder called archives. And if there's any kind of group of, sometimes I'll use this to archive uh, like interesting things I found on the internet and I want to just kind of keep them. Uh, and they're on, they're on a similar subject. So I'll create like a little archival folder in there. Um, and that's kind of uh, what I use that one for. So blogs is uh, when I create blogs, uh, like the archiving workflow, and I wrote one uh, yesterday, I will basically try to capture um, as much as all the information that I can. Now, none of, none of this has been automatically populated. Uh, this is all stuff I'm creating by hand, right? So when I think about what, how, how can I create an archive copy slash a backup of a blog I wrote, I approach everything kind of in a bespoke way. I say, okay, I'll definitely want the text. That's the most important thing. So I'll upload the text, whether it's in the format of docx or txt, it doesn't matter. It's just so long as you copy the data. And in an article that I added images to, I'll also put the images out to archive. So this is kind of the way my folder works. And it's basically everything is done around how that, you know, the type of data and how I can get all the little nitty gritty elements of it. Documents is just stuff like letters and correspondence. First entry is where I put stuff when I haven't figured out a better place to put it. Uh, hosting is something I only do occasionally, backing up stuff I host on the internet, like cPanels of my websites. Um, photos is important. As I do photo shoots, I, uh, I put the originals here and then put them up to the cloud. So that's a very, although I don't do really much, I usually, well, usually it's photos for, uh, for my YouTube channel or to use in YouTube videos or to use in documents. Podcast is very important. And, uh, this is where I create backups of, not backups, put the podcast that I work on. So for instance, uh, Readings and Impact Investing is a podcast that I run for, uh, I guess you could say professional reasons. And basically as I create the episodes, I'll put them into this folder and then uh, that will all, all, all the files that and the folder structure gets recorded in a cataloging software called VVV. Um, and then when we start again, in other words, every time I finish this, I wipe the contents and then we start populating everything again and it reiterates in this way. Um, so what else is just is kind of important that's maybe worth showing? Um, the re rendered video is where I kind of host all the YouTube video. Now, someone asked me the other day, do I back up just the videos or do I back up the shoots? So the answer is that I do both. If I'm working on an important project, uh, like I've just started working on a little sort of documentary, you could say, 
all the shoots are being backed up are being are being put into the system for archival um because they're all important and but in some projects like these youtube videos which are less you know sophisticated let's say i just back up the whole one so let's take a look at the dtw folder dtw for daniel's tech world and this is how this is just again the kind of system i'm using to try to get everything copied because when you even if you try to use a google takeout for a youtube channel it's such an imperfect system you're just going to get the videos but what about all the all the descriptions you wrote what about all the thumbnails you created right so um everything's empty here because i just as i said emptied it out yesterday but these are the folders i've done this is the main level is where i put the videos i create I put the descriptions here for descriptions that I put work into with a lot of timestamps. And the again, the idea again is this this data might be useful in the future. I might want to uh, duplicate it onto a different platform. Um, I never like to think of myself as completely wedded to one platform. And this just allows me to pull all the information out quickly. Uh, what else uh, is there that is kind of worth showing? Sometimes for compliance purposes, I need to retain stuff. Uh, for example, if I have a product dispute on AliExpress, AliExpress is this kind of crazy Chinese marketplace uh, that we use a lot where I'm based and sometimes stuff doesn't work out of the box and you need to uh, supply evidence. So that evidence is useful for uh, just the time of the dispute. But I put that in a folder called retained for compliance and that way, if I were ever asked to go back through it and financial records would go into documents, you get the idea. It's just kind of a structure I've built. Uh, social media posts, I've also put in there for stuff again. Not not everything because this would be far too time consuming. But if there's something that I think, you know, was really that I put a lot of effort to, like a Reddit post uh, or something on my Facebook, I might uh, put these in. Usually I don't, but I just have this folder structure ready to ready to roll um video extra is where i put kind of all the little sort of ancillary bits of stuff that uh, i might want to archive as i create video for example visual effects sound effects captions of videos i've created when i manually create my caption files descriptions shoots for the actual shoot libraries and stock and b-roll is actually a hugely important folder uh, in fact, and when there's a folder I want to access frequently, I just put it on my desktop. So I'll just put that one there again. And basically, you know, as you go through creating videos, you create stock that might be useful in future projects, uh, what we call B-roll in videography. And I'll put the B-roll into that folder uh, so that it's all kind of ready to ready to go. And this is basically the system I'm using. I would say I kind of tweak it from month to month a little bit around the edges, but mostly it's kind of good enough and it's a it's it gives gives me all the boxes I need to put my data into so that when it goes out to archive, it's logically organized on the disks. Thank you for watching today's video. Hope it was helpful. Until the next one.